In the last episode of FMTV, we looked at the Sumerians and the Anunnaki, and we compared it to the Bible and the fall of mankind. We will continue with Gnostics, or what is known as Gnosticism. The Gnostics, which means to know or knowing, recorded a view of creation in that initially there is what is called the Demiurge, and underneath him or her there were the Archons. I say him or her as the entity was known as Sophia, a feminine presence, in name anyway. Sophia sent the Archons to Earth to teach enlightenment. According to the Nag Hammadi scripts which were discovered in Egypt in 1947, they were buried around 2,000 years ago and are claimed to be untarnished by popes, politicians. Meaning no one has any spin on it, the scripts were in pure form that is. The scripts described these archons invading earth and having the appearance or able to express themselves as reptilians. Thus the serpent slash snake thing comes up again. The archons are described as borg-like with no creative spark like God, but are immense copies of the original creation. They apparently envy humans and are only interested in affecting our minds like a parasite. Archon in Greek means ruler. Now does this not sound like a biblical demon? The archons emerged in the solar system prior to the formation of the earth. They are said to inhabit and create the planetary systems excluding the earth, sun and moon. They construct by imitating the geometric forms emanated from the realms of the generators, the cosmic gods. The archons were produced by fractal impact in the dense elementary field arrays of the galactic limbs, when Sophia plunged everything from the galactic core. A quick lesson on fractals here. A fractal is a never-ending pattern. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self-similar across different scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. Driven by recursion, Fractals are images of dynamic systems, the pictures of chaos. Geometrically, they exist in between our familiar dimensions. Fractal patterns are extremely familiar, since nature itself is full of fractals. For instance, trees, rivers, coastlines, mountains, clouds, seashells, hurricanes, etc. Abstract fractals, such as the Mandelbrot set, can be generated by a computer calculating a simple equation over and over. Basically, it's a mathematical equation that creates. It is also called the fingerprint of God. So, you can see here by the fractal zoom example, how geometric fractals and the theory of how the archons first emanated in the universe. In fact, an archon looks to be similar to the dimensions on the Mandelbrot set at any given moment. Here are some observations from the Nag Hammadi scripts from past interactions to present. The Gnostics describe how the Archons attempted to rape Eve, but apparently did not succeed in infiltration. Does that not sound like the serpent seed story? There are two types of Archons. Ones that are embryonic, resembling fetus like babies, or more to the point, what UFOologists claim to be the greys. And the other, well, reptilian. They are said to be fourth dimensional beings which can, at a moment's notice, penetrate the terrestrial atmosphere and terrorise humans. They are a genuine species with their own proper habitat, and may even be considered to be godlike. But they lack intentionality, and they have a nasty tendency to stray from their boundaries and intrude on the human realm. The Archons access human consciousness through telepathy and simulation. They infect our imagination and use the power of make-believe for deception and confusion. Their pleasure is in deceit for its own sake. The Archons apparently don't want to kill us too quickly, however. To successfully implement their agenda of reproducing and propagating themselves throughout the field, they must let the host live long enough to spread the virus. If the host dies too soon, the Archon bog will be prematurely evicted and would suffer the inconvenience of having to find a new residence. Sounds like good old demonic possession. The personality then self-organises an outer display of coherence around the subject, which masks the inner dysfunction, making it hard to recognise. They usurp and displace the person who becomes its puppet. They are a virus that can take over the will of an animal more evolved than itself, enlisting the creature into serving its nefarious agenda. 
they intrude subliminally upon the human mind and deviate our intelligence away from its proper sanity. They are not what makes us act inhumanely, for we all have the potential to go against our innate humanity, violating the truth in our hearts, but they make us play out inhuman behaviour to weird and violent extremes. The Gnostics saw this as a signature of an alien species that piggybacks on the worst human failings. The Archons attempt to deviate us from proper course of evolution. Their most successful technique was and is to use religious ideology to insinuate their way of thinking. The Gnostics claim that salvationism is their primary ploy, in that they want to put an alien implant in place of the Christian belief. Archons are also said to be phobic towards the light. They run away from it. Moreover, their primary objective is inversion in every scale. For example, life spelt backwards is evil, but the Archons are not evil in the sense that they possess autonomous powers of destruction, able to be applied directly upon humanity. They are agents of error rather than evil, but human error. When it goes uncorrected and runs beyond the scale of correction, it then turns into evil. Gnostics taught that the Archons exploit our tendency to let our mistakes go uncorrected. Because the Archons need human complicity to gain power over humankind, anyone who assists them can be considered a kind of Archon, an accessory. How do humans assist the Archons? They fundamentally corrupt character of all human enterprises and institutions, that is, time, history, powers, states, religions, races, nations. They are incapable of independent thought or choice and have no particular agenda except to live vicariously through human beings. They are able to pretend an effect on humans, which they do not really have. In this respect, Archons are the ultimate hoaxes. As said previously, they have the ability to distort reality as in virtual reality, what the Gnostics called HAL, presenting otherworldly scenes or possible scenario scenes much like a perceived vision or television. They are said to do from the start to be creating a world that is pure simulation. The point of the Archons is to make their reality your reality, not the real one. For example, humans are imitated on television but the imitation is altered and is nearly always obscene and profane because the Archons not only do not understand the sacred but they hate it. They are jealous of the natural world and of human beings with the natural world. Also of sexual relationships. Loving couples make them angry and they love violence and are sexually titillated by anger and war and death. They create war to consume energy from the dying. It's all a food source. The Archons feed off our negative emotions. They are energy vampires. Thus Archons get into people and can manipulate people to do things very suddenly that are very odd. But also they are actually responsible for the deterioration of culture as the Archonic presence has spread across the earth and has escalated into the 21st century, you can see that they are responsible for the sprawl and mass ugliness that is everywhere. And I must say they have a heavy influence on the gaming industry. If you type Archon into your Google search, the array of game names associated with is amazing. Makes you wonder what our children are literally playing with. It is unclear where these creatures first came to earth, but we know that they were discovered by shamans in altered states of consciousness long ago. The reason most people don't see them on a daily basis is because their energy signal is beyond our normal narrow range of vision with the electromagnetic spectrum, what scientists call visible light. It seems like we have a malevolent force in the Archons, but they did start out with good intentions, as the legend goes. We've established that the Archons are invisible in form, but they can manifest themselves, much like the demons and the angels of the Bible. So can you see a pattern here? We'll find out in the next episode of FMTV when we look at Muslim theology. Stay tuned and remember, the truth will set you free.